Sav it right. Up the Chels, up the Minnows FC. Hope everyone is doing good. First and foremost, guys, smash to pieces the like button right now as I'm speaking. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the Minnows FC. We are very close to the 4K, guys. We're moving. We are landing the Minnows very, very quickly. Hit the notifications button as well. Don't forget that. And we've got the Minnows FC membership down below in the description. So let's let's wrap land the minerals. We got some exciting stuff to talk about, and we today we got some lovely stuff to talk about. Well, let's firstly start and announce that football has won this week. This is a special, monumental week for football, um, and um, not only Chelsea obviously qualifying for the Champions League knockout stages because we're an elite club. We got the the minerals. We know that. Um, but let's start off with old Spursy. Spursy, Spursy, Spursy. You can't take the Spursy out of Spurs. Let's have it right. Last night, we saw the wig merchant absolutely hysterical, um, celebrating like he'd won the Champions League final or the Premier League title, only for four to five minutes later for it to be ruled offside by the toenail of Harry Kane. And um, isn't it delightful? And I'm going to land this one right now because this is this is quality. Uh, Antonio Conte says, I would like to see this type of decision with a top team in an important game. I would like to see VAR um, if VAR is so brave. Well, he's just muddied his own club that he's managing, saying that they're a small club, <laughs> which is brilliant. We love that. We, lo You know what I mean? This is Minerals FC. We mud every Tim Pot club. Anyone who gives it the big bollocks, we mud them. And that's what we're doing right now. Um, so, yeah, um, goes to the last game at the Champions League to see if they can, you know, not bottle it and get to the knockout stages. So that remains to be seen. But it's hilarious that they're disputing uh, if it's offside. It's a clear offside. Offside is offside. Get with it. But you weren't moaning when Romero was pulling Cucurella's hair or when Kai Havertz got fouled in our game at the bridge. And VAR done you a favour, a massive favour. In fact, there was so that Mike Dean and Anthony Fraud Taylor, you, you gave them the brown envelope, so it suited you there. But this is a decision, it's a correct decision. At our ground, it was a wrong decision, so have it right. Um, so obviously, um, it's very cold in North London. That's why I'm wearing my, uh, my attire here. It's very, very cold in North London. Um, and um, let's land it on the old uh, the Arsenal, the Arsenal um, uh, draw against um, Southampton. Let's have it right. Um, so I said to everyone, it's the start of Arsenal crumbling, falling off a fucking cliff. Yeah, let's have it right. And this is what's happening now. They've gone away to PSV and they've just got battered 2-0. Uh, Super Mick Arteta thought he could rest some players because he knows his squad is thin and he got done. Now they've got to rely on the last game of, see, uh, the, last game of the group stage to see if they can top their group. Probably not. Probably not. Um... Bottle jobs, they are that they are um, the non-elite club that they are, just like Spursy. Um, I, 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 well, I beg to differ, guys. Is it going to happen? Not so sure. Let's see. Hopefully, they do stay in the Europa League. I want them to keep playing as many games as possible. Wear their squad down, wear it thin, get some injuries going, uh, and let them fall off that cliff out of the top four zone because that is likely what's going to happen. We know that. Um, and ironically, uh, the last time Arsenal played a knockout stage in the Champions League was six years ago. Our gaffer, Graham Potter, yeah, he's come in for five minutes, four games. Smashed AC Milan to pieces. Absolutely smashed them to pieces. Done a double, we know that. Smashed Salzburg to pieces. His first game for Chelsea managing was a Champions League game at an elite club. Obviously, that's what happens when you join an elite club, not like Arteta and uh, the Wig Merchant. And he draws that game. And we are now qualified for Champions League. He has reached the knockout stage of Champions League, walking into Chelsea Football Club, because of our mentality, the club stature that we are, the biggest club in London that we are, uh, we all know that. And obviously, the rivals, they they should know that. They're not even our rivals. They just, they want to be rivals, but they're not. Um, yeah, he's done it. 
and they haven't been there for six years. So delightful minerals. We love that. Football's won. But let's have it right. Things are getting hot, guys. Things are getting very, very hot. And we all know that they're getting hot. We know they're getting hot. So while I let me just take my do you know what? Do you know what? It's too hot in here. Gerard Romero, Brocalona, it's so hot. Things are getting hot. Let's have it fucking right. Let's land the minerals, guys. Let's land the minerals right now. We're going to say it as it is. Dude, this is what I think of Barcelona, bro. Brocalona. Just be, be, be very quiet, yeah? And just listen to this. Hopefully you can hear it, yeah? <laughs> it's not the toilet. That's the toilet, bro. I'm flashing all their shit down the toilet. You understand me? That's what I'm doing, bro. I'm flashing it all down the toilet. The fucking absolute rats. Absolute full of shit. Every single one of them. Let me flush it again just for one more time. Just for just for the just for, for Tommy T and Bowling. Let's have it right, guys. Let's have it right. That's a classic, guys. People are playing that on Twitter spaces. It's an absolute classic now. Yeah, um, so Laporta era, Barca spaces, all you accounts, all you Barca broke alone of fans, you're all in the mud. We're, we're, we're literally getting our stomachs pumped at A&E because of the tears, because of all the tears, your tears that we're drinking. You arrogant fucks, every single one of you. Rafina, he's still in the mindset. He's at that level of playing for the dirty leads. you got the four and a half foot midget, um, that you tried to say that you stole from us when we never wanted him. He did it at a masterclass last night. You're playing our left wing back, Marcus Alonso, as a centre back and having Christensen on the bench, which is just laughable, bruv. Maybe he's got period pains or something and that's what's what's the thought process. I don't know what's going on, guys. I don't know what's happening at, at, at Brokelona. you got Lewandowski, one of the greatest strikers, closest to winning Ballon d'Or. Couldn't get you out of the mud. Um, you lost... Um, your position because of Inter Milan, um, not even the Serie A champions in the biggest pensioners league, and you got absolutely done by them twice. You know, Chelsea are doing back to back against AC Milan. Minnell's man, you talk about Pedri, yeah, let's have it right. <laughs> yeah, Pedri, you talk about your golden boy, yeah, that's what you talk about. All these Barca fans, our golden boy, our golden boy this, our golden boy that. Well, let's have it right. We're going to land the minerals right now. Yeah, your golden boy is a fan of minerals, Matt. Minerals man went to the San Siro and won man of the match. Man of the match in 45 minutes. That's all he needed to own the San Siro. What did your so-called generational ballers do? What did they do at the San Siro? Nout. Nothing. Zilch. Things ain't hot. Things ain't happening. Things are very, very cold for you lot, yeah? You absolute mess of a football club. And you deserve it. Absolutely deserve it. We got robbed. You lot, all you fans saying you are you a fraud and mafia. You're a laughing stock, mate. Do you know how many brown envelopes your executives, your owners have handed to the UEFA all these years? In fact, the 2009 semi-final at the bridge, yeah? Look at the brown envelopes. Three penalties we should have had. Three pen. No, fuck it. Four penalties. Just give us one of them. Just give a what? No, that ref never refed another game. That tells you about all the brown envelopes that were handed to that geezer and to the UEFA to make sure that Chelsea, the most hated club in world football, does not get to the final of the Champions League that year. But then we went to your own backyard um, when you had your Messi's, Busquets, um, Xavi's, Iniesta's, all these absolute generational ballers. And we've done you like kippers with 10 men. Um, and then we rubbed the salt in the wounds because we stopped your Super League because you were counting on the league. Now you've got all these levers. Well, the only lever that you've got is a toilet lever. Yeah, that's all you've got, a toilet lever. And I'm flushing all your shit down the toilet because now you're back in the Europa League. You're back in that Europa League. You bottled it last year. You're going to bottle it this year. Chevy's in the mud. Um, and listen... You're not worthy of Thomas Tuchel, so don't even try and give him a call. Do you know what I mean? No brown envelopes, mate. Brown envelopes don't buy class, yeah? Um, it only buys the crooked. That's what you lot are, corrupt FC. All the signings. Dembele, what a waste. Frankie de Jong's criminal. He's on the bench 24-7. It's a, it's a joke. It's an embarrassment. You're an embarrassment as a football club. You're an absolute embarrassment. Um, let's have it right. Um, so, yeah... 
up Broke Loner, up Gerald Romero. We're going to all drink your tears. Up the Chels, up the Minnows FC. This is a royal mudding for the most disgraceful clubs in football. This is why football's won this week. It's a special, special week for football. It really is. On that note, credit to uh, our silky generational German, Kai Havertz, uh, the minerals, yeah. Um, let's bring it up because obviously the fan base are getting a little bit in a pickle. But uh, what's that? Christian Falk, whether he's a brown envelope or not, he's actually come out and he's basically said that uh, Bayern went in for Kai. Kai don't want to go to Bayern. He loves Chelsea. He loves London. His, his, his missus is happy in London. He doesn't want to go out to Germany and, and he wants to challenge himself in a real quality league, which is the Premier League. He's won the Champions League for Chelsea. The Super Cup assist, the Club World Cup winning penalty. He's landed the minerals, clutch, delivered trophies, yeah? Um, so, obviously, all the fan base are getting in a pickle. Um, we're going to bring that up now. We're just going to quickly read out what um, what our, our generational baller has, has come out and said, because um, I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Um, so what's he said here? He said, Kai, so Kai sends a defiant message to Chelsea critics after Salzburg stunner seals Champions League process. And let's have it right. Uh, that was a big, big goal um, at, uh, for us, for us as a club to qualify us for the Champions League knockout stages. And what did he say? He said, after three years at Chelsea, everyone should know by now what I can do, that I'm flexible up front and I can play a lot of different positions, have it said. Yeah? Of course, sometimes it's good to play in different positions and sometimes it's bad. But in general, I'm an offensive player. I like to be in the box. I like to score goals. I like to arrive in the box often. And I don't care if I'm there as a number nine or a number 10. If I'm in the box, I'm there to score goals and that's it. This is the minerals Kai's landing here, bruv. He's sending a message to all the haters. He's letting everyone know that he is a number 10. That is what he is. He's not a nine. He's not a false nine, but he is a goal scoring number 10. That's why you compare him. That's why Pep wants him at Manchester City, according to the brown envelopes, yeah, that he wants that successor to Kevin De Bruyne. Let's have it right. This kid is levels above Kevin De Bruyne at the same age. Fucking levels. And what he's achieved is levels above Kevin De Bruyne at this age. Kevin De Bruyne was nowhere at Kai Havertz's age. Nowhere. And Kai's not even playing in a, a, a finished article team. Let's have it right. Put him in Manchester City. He'd ball out like Kevin De Bruyne. And this kid's got potential, but they know about the potential. Bayern Munich know about the potential. They want their Muller replacement. Let's have it right, because he's a Thomas Muller, bruv. He's a number 10. He's a Roma. And what is Muller? Muller's a goal scorer. He plays in behind the front line, behind Lewandowski, who Muller muddied Lewandowski yesterday. That was beautiful. Big up to Thomas Muller. Let's have it right. But this is the thing, guys. This is the thing that people and the fans are like, how can he How can he have the audacity to say they should know what I'm about by now? Well, you should know. Because if you know what talent is and you know what a baller that Kai Havertz is, yeah, then you know he's delivered clutch moments. He just needs consistency. But he's basically saying, play me in my position, which is number 10, even though I am versatile, which he is. And that's why Tuchel played him, because he can play in other positions. He's worked right off the boys elite. He can make things happen. He's a chance creator. We know all these things, but he's a luxury, silky German. He's got the silky minerals, bruv. He'll land it. Play him with Mason Mount as though two tens were balling, bruv, in this Potter system. All right? And I like the arrogance. I like the ego. I want to have players that got ego like that. He scored one world-class goal. He scored a world-class goal uh, against England for Germany. He's already scored two Premier League goals for us. And one was a winning one against West Ham. Big one where he shushed and everyone got their knickers in a twist. But let's have it right. I like the arrogance. It's important to have self-belief. And now we set the tone. He's ready now. Let's kick on against Brighton. Let's land the minerals, Kai. Assist, goals, whatever. Just a ball out. Just ball out as that number 10 with Mason Man. Just ball it. Yeah. And then we go. To, we have the Arsenal. Let's do Arsenal. Let's have it right. So I'm I'm loving that, guys. I'm absolutely loving the fact that the silky German, and we know about, we know, everyone knows who knows about football, who knows about, knows about talent, 
can see, who's got a, an eye for a footballer. Uh, he's one of the most sought after footballers in Europe. We fought so hard, tooth and nail. Roman Abramovich, the Don, fought tooth and nail for Kai Havertz. He specifically wanted this player. He was the most talked about player in Germany and Europe. Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Liverpool, us, everyone was in for him. Even City were interested, you know, and we've got him. We've pipped him. We've got the minerals at our football club. And the arrogance he's showing, I like it. I like it. You know, this is this is very important at our football club. So let's have it right. Let's respect Kai Havertz, the silky German, yeah. Let's back this kid, all right? Let's back him because we don't want him to, to take that next step at another football club. And that is the that is what could happen if you sell him. He will go on in his next big... I think it's a big season for Kai. He knows it's a big season. He's he, and, I, and I think he's fired up. That goal has ignited something in him. You know, he's shown his class. And that's what we need to see. We need to see it consistently. consistently. We all know that. But it doesn't mean you don't back the kid. It doesn't mean that you think he's a shit footballer, that he doesn't offer anything. Everyone asks, where does what's his best position? What does he offer? I'm telling you what he does and what he did against Germany and what he'd done for Chelsea at Salzburg, what he'd done in the Champions League final. That's what Kai Havertz does, yeah? Clutch moments. The way we play as a team with him is what he does. His touch, his vision, his creativity, his intelligence, his speed of thought, yeah? That Muller, Kevin De Bruyne, type profile player. We've never had a player like that for a long time. We had Juan Mata. We've had Lampard. But now we've got this player. We've got a player like that, of that calibre, yeah? Along with Mason Mount. It's very scary for, for everyone else in Europe with these two players, both at a similar age, both balling out for Chelsea. So, this is my thing. Play him as the number 10 because that's his position where he gets the free roaming role where he can drift like be on the last shoulder if he needs to link up, but I still have a focal point, and that's how you get the best out of Kai Havertz. And I think Potter has acknowledged that against the game against Salzburg. So, the moral of the story on Minnells FC is very, very simple back him, believe in him, and go and study him. I told you, lot go and study Mason Mount from Vitesse all the way up to his current stage at Chelsea. Go and look at the quality in the minerals of this player at the test where he's got grown men falling on their asses, Yeah. Let's have it right. Falling on their asses Because he's so quick. He's Johan Mount, bro. Johan Mount. And let's have it right. We got two Johan Cruyffs in our side because Ragnick said that Kai Havertz is the modern day Cruyff. Clipped. And Hans Fraser, who's the manager at Vitesse, said he likens Mason Mount to Johan Cruyff. Johan Cruyff, let's have it right. And Frankie De Jong. And then you got Roy King comparing him to Paul Scholes. you got Scholes comparing him to Frank Lampard. These are the minerals, bruv. we got us. I'm comparing Havertz to a Muller-type player, a Kevin De Bruyne-type player. He's got Cruyff minerals in him as well. So I see it all. It's like I say, like with Mount, everyone didn't understand Mount way back when he first burst onto the scene and I was telling everyone about him and they're still, they're still the haters because they're all being mudded, royally mudded. Let's have it right. They're in the mud. But these two generational ballers, yeah, are the future of our club. We need to, we need, and they've got a great chemistry, these two. They've got a great, great chemistry, yeah. And Minnell's Mount will win Ballon d'Or. We know that. We know that. Um, another fan of Minnell's man as well. They, they, they keep racking up these fans. Um, but let's have it right. Um, we are Chelsea. Yeah, that's what we are. We're the most elite club in London. Um, we see things that they'll never see. So Arsenal, uh, Spursy, know who your daddy is. Yeah, know who your daddy is because Chelsea Football Club is your daddy. You show respect when you talk about Chelsea Football Club, all right? And you're both falling off cliffs. We know that. Bro, Colonna, you're down the toilet, and we love it. it. We love to see it. And we do see things that they'll never see. It's as simple as that. So it's up the Chels, up the Kai Havertz, the Kai Generational Havertz, up the Minnells Mount, the Johan Mount, up the Minnells FC. 
And let's drink their tears together, guys. Let's drink their tears. I'm going to down it. I'm going to neck it because there's a lot of tears to drink. have it right like and subscribe put your comments down below big up to every single one you supporting you know you got the minerals land your minerals down there up the chels